for the introduction. Welcome to you. Good morning. I've come now with my spectacles of a practitioner, of a practical technician. And so the question is about uncertainties in Dresden. We expect 60 hours of advance at a centimeter precision in order to forecast the floods. In 2013, we actually made highly precise forecasts. I actually uh, was able to forecast the flood in 2013 with a deviation of just one centimeter. What is a flood risk? According to the directive, the flood risk management directive, the flood risk is a product of probability of occurrence and uh, flood damage. But uh, it would be better for, from a technical point of view to see hazard and vulnerability and risk is the section, the intersection between the two uh, circles. So we have a latent uh, potential hazard of an occurrence, a flood occurrence with an uncertainty. And on the other hand, you have risk elements, local risk elements in regions where damage can occur and, and the risk is actually the, the intersection between the two items and most people mix up risk and hazard. Flood risk management is highly complex, is a highly complex process. Here you see the circle, you have the flood itself, then you have the follow-up with a lot of stakeholders being active, then you have the regeneration period, restoring, etc., and then, of course, the end result analysis in our flood events 2002, 2006, 2010, 2013. We now heard about the causes, the meteorological causes. I actually experienced this personally not just from hydrological and meteorological processes. And we, of course, added further uh, analytical elements in order to improve it for the future. And what is very interesting is the phase of the prevention in order to reduce the vulnerability. The objective of the integrated flood risk management is the utmost reduction of the flood risk implying most of the stakeholders and parties interested across all sectors on all levels. You see water resources management, hydrology is the central point, but there are a lot of stakeholders around uh, hydrology, and there are also a lot of people actually not knowing that they are requested to make the contribution. And of course you have flood control strategies, risk avoidance would be a wonderful thing, but very tricky. In order to come here, for example, you had to expose yourself to the traffic risk. It was not uh, able to avoid the risk. Of course, you can have certain uh, reduction uh, potentials not to uh, pass the crossing when there is red light. So risk, risk reduction, risk limitation, risk transfer. Risk transfer, transfer means, for example, uh, insurance. You transfer the risk to your insurer. And risk acceptance, also called self-retention, is a very important aspect. So that means you can not have 100% protection and you will have to accept the residual risk. I do not use residual risk because it seems to underestimate the actual risk that can occur when exceeding the limit. You have influence on the risk on many levels. You have the process level where you look into the physical processes and you need very precise input data in order to uh, tell people exactly what they need and so you can sleep well during the night. So very important. You need a good description of the processes in their intensity, their probability of occurrence and the 
And the water uh, balance cycle is, of course, a complex thing. I show, uh, I show you here two charts from our houses, from our office. In terms of temperature, most of the models agree. There is uh, general warming. We will have more energy, more moisture. But how about distribution across regions? In Saxony, there is a shift from winter to summer. In the, in the last uh, contribution, we heard, uh, we heard the question, will it be more intense in the future, more frequent? So, Because this is our decision-making level. But we need very clear data. And I'm going to show you another chart with uh, error propagation and similar things. When trying to make an estimate of the, uh, hazards, here you see the limits and the uncertainties related to the projections. You see the 2002 events with an underestimate of 20%. So, when having your measurements, it's okay, but the forecast, the projections, the extrapolations, I know this, when we get the German Weather Service information and uh, the general situation is not so clear, then of course the decision-making process will be longer also. And so we are eager, of course, to act, to respond, and so we need uh, highest clearness and clarity in terms of data. Here you see the hazards in, uh, broken down by types of flood. You have small-scale uh, uh, torrential rain, large-scale synoptical uh, uh, rain. You have ice floods, so melt, melt floods. Then you have very localized uh, floods or supra-regional floods on a larger scale. During the past 12 years, we actually had to cope with four supra-regional flood events here in Saxony. And then in the Saxon Flood Center, this is the new level. We have nine catchment areas or catchment zones based on physical knowledge. Here you see various examples of the nine sub-regions in Saxony. We use those this knowledge in order to make our forecasts, but we cannot ac give actual values and say the level will be between this and that. No, that, that's not possible. The people do not want ranges, but we shall deliver clear values, exact values, linked to uh, uncertainties, of course. And then, of course, we have, uh, based on the hydrological parameters and variables, we actually derive our structural dimensions for dikes, for flood protection structures, like Bavaria and Bad Württemberg, they actually calculate a climate allowance, the overdimension their structures. We actually calculated through various examples for existing dikes, and we say that the certainty is not sufficient to induce us to use more money for the climate allowance. We have a technical allowance, safety allowance, of course, which is calculated for the dimensioning, and so our engineering structures uh, are increased in safety. So this, but this is a technical aspect, technological aspect. So this is a kind of uh, a shift of investments towards the future. So this is our philosophy. So we use technological uh, allowance, but no climate allowance. No overdimensioning, third dimensioning. In Saxony, we have a water re resources portal online in the internet, readily accessible, and every citizen and every individual person can actually uh, make his or her request. Afterwards, on the left-hand side, in the, in the lobby, you have the portal of Reikis with Mrs. Kuhn, my colleague, which will tell you more in detail. So we actually propose information to 
stakeholders to allow them to use and work with them. And of course, hydrological, hydro hydraulic calculations are necessary. In order to come to more detailed dimensions, dimensioning the results, you have the differential equation system that you normally should solve. Uh, but you cannot solve it, but you, will, uh, you must use hydrodynamic numerical models. There we have uh, one, two, and three dimensional uh, models for the single dimensional models. You have uh, discharge cross section and depth just for two dimensional uh, to, uh, left bottom. You have, you, you have uh, currents, and, but you only have one depth information, but you have uh, information of currents. And for 3D, you would have all information in detail. But the more dimensions you use, the more data you will need, and the more information on the surrounding requirements and conditions are necessary. Also, in, during periods of non-floods, it's very important to make your measurements in order to be prepared for extreme situations. Otherwise, you would not be able to make clear statements. And, uh, and in terms of in the political world, it's very important to use the money in non-flood times in order to be properly prepared. It's not normal in the political context. Also in Saxony, like in other countries of uh, Europe, we have identified our risk areas. You see uh, almost 3,000 kilometers of uh, flowing waters broken down as shown here, 100 kilometers along the uh, federal water course of the Elbe. So, and the question is whether we will have to identify heavy rainfall zones and flood generation zones, but uh, do we have enough data? So we will need more in the future. But uh, flood generation areas and zones have been identified in Saxony. We did this, for example, here in the or mountains in the local region, where we know that there is a strong uh, runoff and discharge in terms of heavy rainfalls. And there is even a construction ban. Each time you actually make Im impermeable grounds, you will have to uh, open up other ground areas in order to avoid uh, worsening of runoff conditions. On the other hand, so we, I already said, risk is the intersection be between hazard and vulnerability, and that is why it's important to assess the vulnerability. And here we speak about the networking assets made by man. So it's not about destruction of natural uh, courses or beds or river beds. So it's not about destruction of nature, but it's about destruction of man-made assets. So we have two important items, the exposition, that means the risk element exposed to the hazard. On the other hand, the resistance, the so the proneness and resistance of the risk element towards the hazard. As to exposition, it's the local situation of the water body in terms of flood areas. This is the planning basis for hydraulic and for hydrology and a lot of other stakeholders. So risk communication is another important factor in order to uh, raise uh, risk awareness. After five or six years of no floods, you actually can say that the ri risk awareness is almost back at the same level as before the flood event. So it's very so certain uh, re recurring floods so are also uh, awareness raising tool, so to say. So I here is outline the communication. I have an information based on a fact. 
I link it to a message which I try to send. So I send you the content via a signal, a coded signal language. So you received it via a certain channel. You will mirror my message. You will get your idea, hopefully as close as possible to my original idea, and you give a, a message which will lead to action. And uh, especially we as the engineers uh, are faced with a challenge to properly code our signals, to wrap them in a way comprehensible by the target group. So, for, so uh, how to define the target group by age, by, a stakeholder, uh, by the level of stakeholders, which types of communication younger people will use. Uh, other channels of communication, so it's a tricky thing as well. Resistance and proneness That's the next item. So it's type of construction, for example, or the structure condition of a building or structure, embankment or dike. So that is why we have a fact sheet or a, a flood compliant specification and building. But we need improved methods for structure analysis. I give you an example, the, sex, the Saxon dikes. I, I say one third of the dikes are between 50 and 100 years old. 22% are older than 100 years, just to give you a rough idea about the structures. The hydraulic, the f more than 650 kilometers of structure analysis were made in order to, to uh, evaluate the structure condition. In general, in Germany, we have a poor database. The, the South German database was stopped in the 1970s, lack of funding. In the UK, for example, they are far beyond our uh, levels. There you have tangible, intangible uh, damage and a real classification of flood damage, which gives a very good picture of what a flood is and can do. Here you see a table showing an area-based approach used here in Saxony in order to evaluate the damage potentials. 7.2 billion euros is the damage potential, two-thirds regarding to real property and one-third to um, moving property, to movable assets. And especially in the flood risk, it's the highest uh, damage potential because uh, most of the towns and cities uh, are located very close to riverbeds, the actual hearts of older towns. They, were, they are different. They are always on raised level, but the, the growing cities actually came close to the river banks. So as to the evaluation of flood risk, in Dresden we developed a model which has been implemented for all of Saxony. You have construction types and age levels for buildings and structures, 49 basic types of structures in Saxony. So I can actually count the stock of buildings you have in a certain area. More than 1,000 buildings in a town of Perna were evaluated, giving 10 construction types, 10 building types, and according to the types, you can commission uh, architects and engineers to uh, prepare for uh, regeneration and restoration measures after potential floods. There you have a good planning basis. And then, of course, you have certain mitigation approaches to avoid building in certain areas to uh, cause a, a resistance to allow the building, new buildings to resist better, or you have to adjust existing buildings to resist better to flood events. This example already uh, mentioned. 
Die Meteorologie ist hier noch gar nicht drin. Meteorology uh, plays no part in it. Hier haben Sie sozusagen Here you have die Hydrologie. The hydrology. Die Eintrittswahrscheinlichkeit you have hydrology. Auf der y probability auf der of occurrence und on Y and the discharge in X. Das ist dann die Hydraulik. And you have hydraulic water level over um, discharge cross section. And then you have the damage calculation and the probability of occurrence and the damage potential. And here you see that you create an actual large range of errors propagating from one chart to the other. So uh, on this basis, it is very, very tricky to come to conclusive statements. But the general expectation is to have such clear forecasts and projections. And we all together should work on it, because that is what people expect. It can work. I can show you that. At the example of three Saxony maps, on top you see the flood in 2002 and the water bodies actually hit by the flood. It was central Saxony and west Saxony. Uh, 2.0 billion of damage, the flood in 2010 on the right hand side, about 1 billion, 1 billion um, euros of damage, and red color is always highest alarm. And uh, so 2002 even 6.2 billion and 2013 2.0. Oh, a billion of damage for an event close to the one in 2002, but it showed us that part of the measures taken after the flood of 2002 actually um, worked out. And also there was enough experience, growing experience of uh, people acting and responding to the flood. We had te technical buildings, flood lines, which actually worked. And so certain districts flooded in 2002 were actually protected in 2013, which reduced um, the damage. And that can actually be seen from the absolute figures. All the values of the maps can be accessed online, but there are certain uh, challenges on the left hand side. Uh, you have Saxony on the right hand side, uh, the Netherlands. We have one flood director, floods directive in, in the European Union, but there is a lot uh, there's a lack of harmonization in terms of description and uh, terminology and approaches. Here, is, here I show the differences between the hazard maps created by each of the countries. Because for Europe, whether or, or even for hydrology, um, political bound boundaries and borders play no part. Here you see the, the risk map. Uh, left hand side, Saxony right hand side, Czech Republic. So you see rather different in terms of coding and legends. And very often we have cross-border cooperation or you have teams helping fire department, helping helping across the border. And then it's very tricky to have uh, maps like this and not to, to read very immediately and comfortably the codes in the maps. <coughs> this is the flood risk maps and the differences in between. We are now in the second cycle of implementation of the directive. There are always six year cycles, then you have ass first assessments, risk maps, and risk management. We have now approached the second cycle, and after each cycle, there is a better harmonization between European countries. This is the example of Leipzig, a risk map, because Leipzig was always lucky to escape the huge floods, because they have enough storage space because of the former lignite mining pits uh, abundant in the surroundings of the city. And uh, as a general outlook and conclusion, it still is a challenge methodologically and technically in order to make further progress. Very important to have networking 
expert staff, coupled models, and efficiency evaluations are necessary. Also, in terms of the floods directive, the good economic condition of our water bodies, these are the general objectives and should be complied with. The impact of climate change should be considered as well in all our considerations in our day-to-day -day work. In our office, we work a lot on an early warning system in cooperation with the German Weather Service and other institutions. We must adjust ourselves to the demographic change, the trends in terms of high concentration of population, because this will create new uh, damage potential, so especially in terms of hazardous, flood hazardous, flood prone areas, risk areas as they are called by the directive. So when you, when you build a dike or another technical structure, then there are always requirements associated therewith because it's mo uh, there might be another classification in another country where it is not con uh, uh, that after our protection of a certain area we help other countries across the border for example to have less uh, flood prone areas with another classification and with more settlements maybe in the same area we have to look into long term processes we actually managed in Saxony to convince people that when, then when, whenever you, you buy a real property, you get the information from the land office whether or not it is flood prone area or not. So that means every party interested in buying a property here uh, there's no need to collect the information, to pick it up proactively, but it is delivered along with the extract from the land register. 120 years between these two uh, photographs, you see similar, similar effects. Just to show you, we have to learn our lesson. Thank you for your attention. Many, many thanks, Mr. Müller. That actually fits well in uh, the two contributions of this morning. I think it was a very convincing analysis and a deep-going, far-reaching analysis of what's on. Mr. Grünewald? I agree with most of what you said, naturally, because there are a lot of common, there are a lot of co-working together also in the past. But the events in 2002, 2010, 2013, I think your correlations and comparison in between saying we have uh, actually learned from it, because the events were actually isolated events in 2013, for example, when thinking about Saxony Anhalt, they actually had huge problems. We were lucky enough because the, there were not other um, uh, accessory uh, conditions and events. My point of view. You sh showed us the final photographs about forgetting floods. We, we call it sometimes flood dementia. It's not fair, but it actually is correct. We tend to forget. But we have one problem associated with that, this infarctus, as I call it. Our um, water courses actually uh, suffer. They, we have to cope with raising levels from non-managed water beds. So it's very important. And that will provide further risk potentials, higher risk potentials, new risks in flood-prone areas. And we actually have to break this cycle. So it's very important to have properly managed water courses. That is why both directives are considered together in order to have the good ecological condition, the natural view or the natural characteristic 
on the one hand, and the flood protective interventions on the other. In the lava, we have lava project, we have a catalog of actions, three categories. One is the best, that's the action uh, complying with both, with the objectives of both directives, and then we have actions related to, to the one directive without hindering the objectives of the other one. Then, of course, we have the conflictual points, conflict points between the two directives in order to avoid the effect you were speaking about. But you should not compare Saxony and Saxony Anhalt as the two German states, because our colleagues, because the personal experience of having experienced a, a flood oneself is different from hearing from floods. For example, in Augsburg, where I was, in Edinburgh, they actually decided not to evacuate the people afterwards. They had to evacuate and they had to use helicopters. But they should have asked us, for example, and we would have said, you must evacuate at an early point of time because uh, I'd say it's a personal experience on the one hand and just hearing from flood events from mouth to ear, that's different. In Torga, for example, I sent all my engineers to the glassworks and they did not believe, they did not believe that they would be hit by the flood. Although our people were on the grounds and telling them. So we had a personal experience and once you have the personal experience, you maybe you are more proactive and more responsive. To Wir haben a further command. Zwei Aspekte. Das eine ist wirklich, there are two dass aspects. Vorsorge the technological also, prevention, that means uh, managing uh, water beds, buying dikes, that can be seen. 110 million euros were invested. Uh, Half of the city itself, half of the second state, 1.3 billion of damage in 2002 and 200 million of damage in 2013. I say you see actually that our measures were On the other hand, what is very important is a committed team, a well-experienced team, and the less floods you have, the less experience you will have because of retirement in between, and so we should not overestimate the personal experience in the long run. But you said a souvenir flood, uh, so or recalling floods, recalling us. And, uh, remember, reminding us of the risks and hazards. And you, and you also know this, this relay effect that fire departments follow the flood, so from the upstream parts when there is lessening of the effects, they help the others downstream. I have a comment, a remark regarding an even more critical situation. Uh, floods in estuaries by, by the sea. Weil ein physikalischer Parameter a physical parameter is like this is, can be predicted in a more precise manner, and so there are precautionary measures. So that's zum Beispiel Hamburg, for example, in Hamburg, alle Deiche und all alle dikes and all protective structures gegen also gegen etwas against high Art. waters, sea high und waters, im Mittel hochsetzt, they actually made an allowance of 80 centimeters on the basis of scientific findings. That's for the first time that an overprotective allowance was made to resist to tidal floods on a precautionary level, they actually respond to a hazard, a risk, because of the prediction by the IPCC of 3 millimeters, then a safety margin was used, safety allowance was added. So my question is, the European Union acts according to the precautionary principle. And you, there was one sentence you said, 
which irritated me to a certain extent, because you said, so we will have to wait and see. At a certain point, you said, we do not act now because the, the Arab propagation is quite large. This is against the European strategy. And now we heard that it is extraordinarily low cost to do something and that uh, there will be refunding by, uh, by future effects. I, I'd say it's a lack of communication on my behalf, so you did not actually grasp what I intended to say. The original directive actually st stipulates that climate change impacts ought to be considered along. We actually regarded the input from your community in order to see whether it is sufficient, precise enough to con induce us to make an extra allowance on that basis. But we considered our normal technological knowledge base allowance already covers this. Uh, we, we calculate uh, wind back pressure and that is why we, we overdimension by almost one meter because uncertainties are always considered and so this aspect was considered already on a technological basis not just on the climate change basis and, and we actually said that as soon as we have more precise uh, results findings from your community then we will actually use that for example like the tidal allowance the tidal flood allowance based on the climate change findings of the IPCC report when, uh, when uh, looking through the cities, uh, as, in, as in Hamburg, for example, you do not actually see the flood barriers or the flood protective uh, measures, because normally you do not want to have technological structures in, in your surroundings and so also in the city of Dresden we actually tried to use structures that are not uh, recognizable as such. And you can actually see Saxony is, uh, is a leader in activities. Yeah, in Hamburg they also say that yesterday we had, visit, uh, we had a visit from Hamburg and we are quite, uh, on, we, we actually agree with our colleagues from Hamburg. Uh, Dr. Müller, thank you for your excellent uh, presentation. And I'd like to tell you as somebody who did not actually grow up with climate change uh, discussions, but now I actually uh, go, through, uh, go to schools and communicate with teams in order to communicate. I'd like to introduce another idea. Individual days, individual events, floods are individual days, individual events, isolated situations which cause a general condition Gleichgewicht bringt, aber die Tage, our balance, in denen uh, Sachsen unter Dürre und Trockenheit stöhnt und leidet, and jetzt ist Saxony, schon wieder in weiten Gebieten in Sachsens und Saxony Brandenburgs hoch. Brandenburg. Uh, Waldbrand, Warnstufe 4 und 5 angesagt. Wir haben zwei Jahre, wo Monate Dürre und Four and five. relevant waren. We had two Bei months of Winter, die dry periods. We had two winters much drier und, uh, than in the past and also dry spring times and millions Schutz, uh, of gesteckt, euros are actually invested einsehe. into flood protection and flood control. But we cannot actually, we will never be able to implement a full scale flood protection protection system. We know Pirna in 2013, this town of Pirna was hit more than in, in the past floods. 
Do you also consider the droughts and the dry periods and the decline of nature, the reduction in nature and the impermeability and the settlements and sealing of uh, grounds? But this is another huge aspect, like in Europe and other industrial nations, we actually see a Destru near destruction, reduction of nature, and uh, a strong anthropogenic impact of our society on the nature. And so we should also look into the, uh, the, uh, into the general picture, droughts and dry periods, water deficits in, nat in the nature, in the agriculture, in forestry. All that should also be kept in mind. Many thanks for your comment, and of course we also deal with that, but this wasn't the subject I was asked to uh, speak about here. But when you look into the water portal, the water resources portal I showed you, then the, the levels are the first item, which is also important. Yeah, many thanks for your presentation. I was also irritated by the same. I, Dr. Kondorfer for the city of Dresden and you, I live in Klein Schachwitz. In 2013, we had such high levels uh, every day. We tried to build our personal barriers and once the levels were falling, then we uh, had to repaint the road. I'm active in the political context, and as an environmental association, we have a critical look into what's done by the state of Saxony. And I must uh, agree with uh, Mr. Grünwald, it's not your topic, but on the political level we have to urge the political persons to create retention and uh, flood detention, detention areas. This is our uh, political uh, responsibility. We know that uh, upstream of Riesa and Torgau, uh, what we should do there, and we know, of course, uh, there's general resistance on behalf of um, farming of farmers when they are asked not to not to farm their land, but also to have green spaces. So it's very important to um, see to the ecological potential of creeks and small rivers. Today I went to Visa, near Chopau, and I saw the flood barriers they are creating, but I know that there are meadow area, areas that are actually flood plains when used in such a way. So we should also bear in mind the consequences uh, for the political world in order to, to ensure that the money is used in a meaningful way. Oh, many thanks for your input.